So you're interested in pre-releases? Well, listen up. Because you're about to learn today. This video is all about pre-release events, including footage from one I just went to. Pretty much expected to be me coming to your door like a creeper. Trying to get you to play some Pokemon. But if you do decide you want to play in a pre-release event for a future Pokemon set, I will have all of the resources for you to do that at the end of this video. Let me convince you, it's fine. You know, what do they say? ABC is a selling. Always be cute. This is a pre-release kit, also known as a build and battle box. Inside you'll find four booster packs from the new set you'll be opening, and a 40 card pre-constructed deck with one of four promos that has the stamp of the set name. So first off, I have some bad news. Pre-release events don't happen very often. They are showcasing new cards from a new set that is releasing. The only time you're actually gonna run into a pre-release event is a few weeks before the initial release of a main series set. No, I'm not talking specialty sets. Sorry, 151. Sorry, Paul Day and Fates. I still love you. Even more reason to attend one when you can, you know what I mean? Uh Ah! You can go to a pre-release event and have never even touched a Pokemon card before. I'm talking noob status. I'm talking bring somebody that still pronounces it Pokemon. These events are geared toward a casual play setting. Your neighbors around you are more than willing to help out if you have any questions. If you don't know how to play at all, the rules are explained by the event organizer and the decks even come with these trainer tip cards that explain the Pokemon in your deck that you're going to be utilizing the most. I just packed up my stuff for the pre-release tomorrow, so we're gonna go through that and see what I'm bringing. Every player needs a playmat, so I have my playmat. This is a Japanese playmat that I got when I went to Japan for Worlds last year. So it is slightly smaller, which makes it even better for traveling with. And I have a cute little ditto case for it too. The best thing about Japanese playmats is that the discard pile just says trash. Cute deck box. I think I got this at a regional one time. I just thought it was like absolutely adorable. Uh, and inside this one, I have two top loaders and some clear sleeves, just in case we get any hope for, hope for some pulls, let's go. So that I am prepared, unlike literally all my openings ever. <laughs> when you open the box, you have Trubby. Trubby over here. Essential to the gear. You are not gonna expect what is inside of Trubby's brain. Are you ready? It's a yamper. I have a bag within my bag. Within my bag, I guess. Bag within the bag within the bag. Uh, the yamper actually has condition tokens and my V-star marker. And I just separate that out from my dice that you keep track of damage with. It just makes it easier so I don't have to like dump out everything if I'm trying to look for something specific. And then also I put Yampy in here because it keeps Trubby full. I don't want, this is actually so hard to do with one hand. Boom, full trash sack Trubby. I also have a brand new box of sleeves here. These are non-glare black sleeves from Dragon Shield. Keeping it nice and simple. Top pocket here, I have my business cards. I pretty much always advertise that I have these on me and that is not always the truth. Uh, I often forget them, but if you ever see me in public, ask if I have one. If you want one, I will give you one. I also have a Sharpie in there as well because sometimes people ask me to sign them. Too easy, we have our deck box here ready to grab straight away from the handle. I have my little playmat box and then the poles box in there and then my filming equipment is right underneath that. So plenty of room here. There's even a side pocket for like a water bottle or a drink. I'm actually contemplating bringing my pockets. Uh, I'm playing Pokemon Yellow right now and I don't know, in between rounds could get some leveling in. No, I'm saying, no, I'm saying Pikmin, no, I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but I probably will be too busy filming, so might have to scratch that, save it for another time. 
we're on our way to the pre-release. We're gonna be playing at Savannah Lion Games. I think I've only been here once. Bought a Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game. That is all we did. <laughs> a few things to note that's different about a pre-release. The main thing is that you're playing with a 40 card deck versus a 60 card deck. You also only play with four prize cards versus six prize cards. All right, let's talk strategy going into this specific pre-release for Temporal Forces. I've taken a look at the promos and step one is gonna be not getting for alligator. Any Pokemon that has a move where you have to skip a turn and it's gonna slow you down, especially with such a fast paced format, is usually not good. Especially because it's an evolution Pokemon on top of that, it's gonna be difficult to get into and then difficult to consistently attack. So it just seems like kind of bad. Step two of the strats, I'm going to try not to put anything crazy. I feel like I always pull something out of my extra packs and I put it into my deck because I'm like, oh, this is definitely gonna have some use. And then I never end up using it or even seeing it in my deck. Avoid adding any sort of off the wall cards and just stick to pure consistency. Step three, don't add too much energy. There was another time I added too much energy in my entire hand every single time was just energy drawing into more energy. And all you can do is attach it and if you're too slow, the thing you're attaching to gets knocked out before you can even use it. Try not to use too much energy. You're gonna have a bad time. We're seven minutes out. Taco, how are you feeling? Uh, op, op, was it optimistic? Yeah, yeah, because like... <laughs> ready to kick off our pre-release event. The shop was very crowded and relatively small compared to places I've played before. And they actually had to seat us in the overflow section, but I didn't mind that because it actually helped me set up all my camera equipment and not have to bother people around me. Much prefer playing in the overflow section. The decks are actually more like consistent with releases. It used to just be like- Sometimes you'll get some bangers in here though, and other times- Yeah, sometimes- So first you'll sit down and construct your deck. We had 40 minutes to do this. You don't have to make a single change to your deck, which is why it's so beginner friendly. Here's the real moment of truth. Which promo will you get? Of course we got for alligator, but lucky for me, there were multiple for alligator builds and mine came with Maridon as the secondary Pokemon. The peak acceleration move only costs one energy and it allows you to search two basic energy cards and attach them to your future Pokemon. It also does a nice 40 damage. One of those energy can be the psychic required for the sparking strike move, 160 damage. And if you're hitting the same Pokemon, you've already done 40. So it's probably gonna be a knockout. After the shock of the Feraligator, I had to get my spirits up and open some packs. The only major pull I got was the Skull Villain EX. You would love to add an EX Pokemon into your pre-release deck, but only if it fits. I didn't have the evolution line for Skull Villain. It was also grass type and not a future Pokemon, so definitely not the play. But you know what I did pull? Two Iron Thorns. This brings me to another important rule about pre-release decks. Normally, you can only have four of the same type of card in your deck, but at pre releases, there is no limit. This was the first time I actually got to utilize this aspect because my kit already came with four iron thorns. My deck was about to have six iron thorns. With the support of those extra Pokemon, I could potentially take a risk and remove the Feraligator line entirely. But that choice would not be easy. The only eligible cards from my packs that I could add into my deck were a Mawile and an Iron Valiant. That meant if I was losing a ton of cards out of my kit, I would have to replace it with something and I had nothing besides energy. Try not to use too much energy. You're gonna have a bad time. This was going to leave more than half of my deck being energy cards. Was I willing to risk turn after turn only drawing into energy? Yes, yes I was. Leaved up 
my deck and sat down for my matches against everybody at the card shop. This is where pre-releases really get to shine. Because it's such a casual play environment, you're pretty much sitting down, playing a chill game of Pokemon and meeting new people. I was beyond excited about one player's dice bag that was a Kabuto. Like one of my favorite Pokemon. Oh my nice. gosh, can I touch it? That looks oh really God. good. I've, I've used him for, um, I've used him for like 15 years. He stood up. That is so <laughs> incredible. I got my rhythm down with my deck. Even my Mawile was getting some damage out on the field in these games. Well, let me tell you, this baby right here worked like a charm, okay? <laughs> I won all of my matches except for my very last game. I got paralyzed on the turn that I was about to win. But oh my goodness, what a hype way to go out. The people I met along the way were incredible. Everyone was very nice. I even met several people that said that they got into playing Pokemon because of my YouTube videos, which is like the highest compliment ever. And at the end of all your matches, you get three additional packs. And these packs, I was pretty lucky with. Also, this happens and it was incredibly funny. Yes. <gasps> What? <laughs> the bacon! You may, oh you my may give God. me a think you pulled something. That's so cute! Is there something behind it? So hopefully by now I've convinced you to want to play in your own Pokemon event. Here's how you find one. Go to Pokemon.com, you can click play Pokemon events, find an event, type in your city, and you'll get a list of local card shops near you that are sanctioned and holding events all the way from pre-releases to weekly play to league challenges and cups. The other incredible resource I have for you is JustInBasil.com specifically the deck building for pre-release tab. This has everything I discussed in this video and more. Both of these links will be in my description. Thank you all so much for once again listening to me ramble on about Pokemon. I hope you all enjoyed this video today. Make sure to share this with anyone who's interested in pre-release events. And please let me know if you end up going to one because of this video, that would be super cool. I'm flying to Vancouver this weekend because I will be commentating the regional event that is going on there. So if you want to check that out, go to Pokemon's official stream on either Twitch or YouTube. Busy weekend for Boo, but if I don't see you in Canada or in the stream, I will definitely see you soon here on this channel. Thank you so much again for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Mwah!